Hi friends, it's Amber. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, my name is Amber. I make videos on books, productivity, writing, everything in that vein. Welcome. Recently I realized that I have not really posted a wrap up in a long time and I don't think I've ever actually posted a wrap up to YouTube. Traditionally I share my wrap ups on my blog where I can share what I rated the book, a link to the book, a little like review and summary of the book what I thought but what I really want to start doing is doing more of that on YouTube as well as the blog because I know not everyone checks both places. Because it's been a minute since I've done a wrap up it's gonna take me a little bit to put down a full rundown of what I've read since I think my last wrap up was in March. So in today's video I'm not gonna share every book that I finished. I will link my Goodreads down below so if you want to go like look at everything I do log everything in Goodreads but I'm going to share like eight or nine books that I finished in the last couple of months that I thought were really really noteworthy so let's get started. Okay I'm gonna go in chronological order from latest to most recent read. So starting off we have The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I read this book in April and I believe I gave it four stars. So I've talked about it before. Christina Lauren is one of my favorite author duos. I actually got to interview them for my podcast which is linked down below. They are amazing human beings like I enjoyed our conversation immensely but I had talked about for a while like the speed that they put out books sometimes I wonder like how do you keep up momentum and like consistently put out hits and I feel like the last few books before this one just like weren't as big of like a Christina Lauren punch as other books had been for me like I love Dating You Hating You it's one of my favorite books in the romance genre ever um, all, a lot of their earlier things were just like so so good like my favorite Half Night Stand but I felt like the last couple books that I read by them just weren't the same punchy books that I was used to and then we got this. So in this book we follow Jessica she's a single mom she works in statistics and she's very focused on just like being a mom getting her life not really looking for a person. We also meet River our love interest he runs a company that matches people based on their DNA so you give them a DNA sample and they allow you to pick how much compatibility you're looking for so there's different levels and they match you with someone who is genetically your soulmate. So River and Jessica end up to both submitting to this system to find their soulmates as kind of like a test run. Of course after they submit they both end up matching with like 98% compatibility which is the highest compatibility the company has ever seen among a match and the two decide that for publicity stake with a lot on the line for Jessica financially that they're going to fake date and see how true the match is. I loved everything about this book. I love the side characters. I love the pacing. I love the plot. I love the premise. Like this to me was like Christina Lauren at their prime. So like I mentioned Jess the main character is a single mom. She has a little daughter named Juno who I believe is seven and she's just so carefree and precious and precocious and I could not help but fall in love with her and the relationship that she develops with River as he gets to know Jessica more is just so precious and pure and I never thought that what I was missing from my romance were more parents but you don't see a lot of that in romance it's very steamy to have two singles who aren't attached to anyone but like Juno was the perfect addition to this cast of characters. I highly recommend this book it was so good if you are a Christina Lauren fan I feel like you will be so satisfied with this book and if you haven't read them before I think this one is a good one to start with if you're not going far back into their earlier catalog. So two books that I read in May that I absolutely adored. One was It Had to Be You by Georgia Clark. I'm a big Georgia Clark fan. I really enjoy her books. I've read everything that she's released so far and I feel like this was definitely um, like a number two for me. Her first book The Regulars is one of my favorite books of all time maybe. It's just so good. But this one I really loved as well. I gave it four stars. So in this book we follow Liv. She's living in New York. She's a wedding planner and she just lost her husband. After her husband dies she learns that the business that they've run together, this wedding planning business, he left his half to his mistress. So now financially and just like logistically Liv has no choice but to either go bankrupt and lose it all or run this business with the woman who was sleeping with her husband. We follow them as they develop not only like a professional relationship but an authentic friendship and we also get vignettes from a few other couples as they're navigating 
all of the changes that they're going through that kind of parallel the changes that Liv and the girlfriend are going through. The girlfriend's name is Savannah, by the way. Actually, I think I said I gave this four, I think I gave this three and a half stars, which is still a really good rating for me. So what I loved about it, I love the friendship between Savannah and Liv. I thought it was so funny. It's like a lot of funny moments. They're very true to themselves and authentic. So yeah, I felt like their friendship was really authentic and I enjoyed reading it. Those were the most enjoyable parts for me. There were some couples that we follow in the book that I was just like not as excited about their storylines. Like there's a gay couple and one of the guys really, really wants to be married the other one is not really looking to get married right away he's happy the way things are and like their story I found myself just getting kind of bored with it where I either would have needed more of it and have it more built up or they could have just not been included and I wouldn't have been as upset I also really love the story of Savannah coming into herself because she's obviously much younger than Liv and she didn't realize that she was in a relationship with a married man so now that she has moved to New York to start this business with her ex-boyfriend's ex-wife, ex-boyfriend's widow, widow? It's a lot. Um, she's really learning about who she is and like what she wants from a relationship, including whether or not she even wants to exclusively date men. She's really figuring out who she is sexually, who she is professionally, who she is personally. There is another side character in one of the other couple vignettes we follow. Her name is Zia. She is, um, Oh my gosh, how do I describe her? She like does a lot of side hustling and basically she's like working to help support herself and also her sister and her ki sister's kids. And she ends up falling for a guy who's like a celebrity and I thought their love story was really cute, but it always comes back to Savannah and Liv, which I think worked really well. If I had to compare this to something, I think the book even compares it to Love Actually, where there's like the story, but then there's like all the other stories that we're watching. And like there's one that gets a little bit more airtime, but they all are also equally on stage. It's like that. I really enjoyed it. I think Georgia Clark is phenomenal and I look forward to reading more by her. In May, I also read Instructions for Dancing by Nicola Yoon. If you watched my vlog around this time, you saw me reading this one. This book was so precious. I was sent an advanced reader copy of this book and I gave it five stars. So we follow a teenager named Evie in this book. Her parents have recently split up and now she's pretty much done believing in love until one day she gets, I don't know if we want to call it a blessing or a curse, where she has the power to see how a couple's relationship will pan out over time. So she sees them kiss and she can tell how their relationship started, where it's at now and how it's going to end. She doesn't really understand like why she suddenly has this power so she goes on this little like journey to figure it out and her journey leads her to a dance class where she starts taking dancing lessons like classical ballroom dancing lessons. Obviously to do ballroom dancing you need a partner so there's a boy named X whose aunt and uncle own the dance studio who becomes her dance partner and her bae. Clearly because she doesn't believe in love anymore she didn't want to fall for X so she's fighting it the entire time and the tension, the will they won't they, the conflict, the emotion like I feel like I cried multiple times while reading this. I think everyone who's ever been in a relationship where it didn't end the way you thought it would has had that point where it's like, is this really possible? Is love like a real thing? Or if you dealt with having divorced parents or seeing people who you really thought were like meant for each other not work out, you'd be able to relate to Evie's story. So that's what I love about it. She's dealing with so many different things. One, she's a teenager dealing with like her friend group, getting ready to graduate high school and all the changes that come with that. Her parents are separated. She has a younger sister who doesn't understand why she's so upset at her father um, after the separation. And now she has this guy who she doesn't want to be falling for, but she can't help how she's feeling. So all these things are happening at different level while she's also navigating this new power of being able to see a couple's destiny. Like it's a lot for Evie. Evie goes through. She handles it as best she can. Sometimes she's kind of a jerk to her family and friends, but we get, we get there. We get there. And X as a character, he's just so gentle and funny and like the complete opposite of Evie in a lot of ways where she's very like what's the plan he's very go with the flow and that together just makes for a very interesting pairing so I really 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 enjoyed this and we'll probably reread this at some point. Okay getting into my June reads so June was the month of Kindle reads and audiobooks for me I read quite a few of those um, one that I want to talk about that I listened to on audio is called Strictly Professional by Christina C. Jones. So I did work with audiobooks.com on Instagram and do a sponsored post. So I got the book for free and was able to give the book for, to, for free to a bunch of you. But this book 
just listen to the audio like you don't have to download it you don't have to get the f a physical copy listen to the audio because the audio did it for me I finished the entire audiobook in probably an afternoon I like ran errands and just had my headphones in the whole time it's perfectly steamy cute romantic but also has like a good plot that's easy to follow if you're looking for a romance that's not super high stakes and that is just kind of like easy to get through in a sitting so this book follows gabby who is just getting out of a really bad relationship and kind of starting life over in a new city she just moved she's starting a new job at a law firm that she's really excited about and she definitely doesn't want to be distracted by a man gabby also has two very controlling parents in her life who she's really trying to break away from that's why she wanted this fresh start to begin with they really try to decide everything about her life from what she studies to where she goes to school to who she'll end up marrying so really she's looking for like as few complications as possible so she ends up meeting this guy Terrence but obviously in her mind she's like it's not going to be a thing I'm not looking for a relationship I'm not doing the love thing I'm not here for that none of that but of course they meet each other again in a very unexpected location no spoilers and now she has to try to figure out like can I be with this guy and still have have the life that I wanted can I still take control of my story can I still you know focus on my career and building up who I am if I also let this guy in when he's definitely not supposed to be in the picture I like this book because it was easy and breezy first of all which I think some people think that that's like a bad quality in a book but sometimes you just want a good story to like satiate you for the moment and this did that for me 100% I think my final rating for this was like a four and a half star and I did listen to the entire thing on audio the romance was perfectly like equal amounts adorable and steamy you got your steamy scenes for sure and then you also get your like cute just like precious romance I would not classify this as like a lusty romance it's definitely a romance with lust the one thing that I did kind of struggle with I think it was especially clear because it was an audiobook was the like anti main character which is Gabby's ex-boyfriend who like pops up occasionally throughout the book he is so like abusive like not physically well it they allude to like former acts of violence from him but he is so just like outwardly a jerk it's kind of hard to believe that like this is like a person but at the same time put nothing past men also I felt the same way about her parents the way that they were written to me it just wasn't believable you had to suspend a little bit of disbelief because it's like this is so ridiculous like this is your literal child are you actually acting like this towards your child but overall I really enjoyed it and I definitely recommend giving it a listen on audio next is a book that I read on my Kindle and that is Rebel by Beverly Jenkins I was in I was home at my dad's and I was in this mood and I was like I just want to read romance written by black women so I literally just googled romance written by black women and all these Kindle books came up with that were older books so books from like the 90s and early 2000s I believe this one came out in like either the late 90s or early 2000s and I'm reading the synopsis and I was like I am not gonna like this book like this is not my genre this seems traumatic and then I read it and I'm pretty sure I finished it in a day and obsessed like I need to finish the rest of the series because there's I think two or three more books in the series and it's so good okay so the book is set in the south shortly after the end of the civil war which is why i thought i wasn't gonna like this book we follow our main character valinda who is living in new orleans and working as a school teacher teaching recently freed slaves how to read and write one day she's teaching at her school and these like thugs show up most likely they are confederate or ex-confederate soldiers and basically like bully her and then if they come and they like trash her school and like threaten her life and she's rescued by this very handsome young man who is driving through with his sister that young man's name is drake he is a captain in the union army and he's working now with the freeman's bureau to help renew newly freed slaves like get their resources and still like working with the army all that so obviously he saves her and romance ensues from there and this was iconic i never thought that antebellum south post-civil war south was the setting i needed for my romance but apparently it does it for me there's so much good tension in this book because what i find with books that are historical romances is there was so much tension automatically because you're expected to like never express affection or show like actual admiration for the person you're falling in love with so there's so much societal tension built in that the 
steamy romance tension is just like the icing on the cake. They have like a very back and forth relationship where it's like she is engaged to another man so she's not supposed to be falling for anyone but she also can't deny that like this man is dreamy. The engagement that she's in is also more of an engagement of convenience where her father who's very controlling knows this guy so he approved of him and she didn't have to worry about that and he is also secretly hiding a portion of his life that their marriage is helping him to cover. So they're more like best friends than lovers and I think that she had just seen so many bad marriages and relationships because her father was so trash that she assumed like better to get in this friendly marriage and ever just like put myself out there and try to find actual love. But she finds it with Drake and uh, I just love it. Drake also comes from this really um, warm and loving family. They are kind of like well-known figures in New Orleans at the time so they own a lot of land. One of his brothers owns a hotel and restaurant. Like they're just very prom a very prominent black family and his family really takes Valinda under their wing and helps her especially as she's trying to get her school back up and running to help other recently freed enslaved people start their lives now that the war is over and everything is different. This was honestly, I think I gave it four and a half stars, but it really might be a five star read for me. I would 100% continue the series, 100% want to read more Beverly Jenkins books. Like it was just that good to me. I thought the writing was good. It was pretty fast paced also, like a winner. And for my last June read that I'm sharing, this book I did read the physical copy of and that is Off the Record by Cameron Grant. This is probably going to be one of my favorite books of 2021. I gave it five stars. I thought it was excellent. So in this book we follow Josie who is 17. She's a high school student and she is a phenomenal journalist. She's already at her young age freelance writing for a ton of very credible publications. Her byline is out there and she gets the opportunity to go on a press tour after winning a writing competition to talk about a new movie that's coming out and to interview the cast of that movie. While she's on the trail like on this press tour she ends up getting really close to one of the other young actors in the film and two of the other young actors in the film one guy who becomes the love interest and a girl who she becomes relatively friendly with and she uncovers a really sinister abuse scandal that's going on and because she is the journalist it falls on her to be the one to break the story. I love everything about Josie as a character. She is a fat black girl who is talented and smart but also deals with anxiety and is just trying to figure out like how to navigate the world. Also I don't know if they officially give it um, like a label or a name in the book. She's queer and also trying to figure out how that fits into her identity while she's also navigating being a young fat black teenager who deals with very adult worlds. Like she's literally building a career while everyone else is trying to figure out college application. Her anxiety shows up in a lot of different ways for her. It causes her to be a little bit more withdrawn, it causes her to have panic attacks, and I thought the anxiety representation in this was just so well done. I saw myself so much in Josie in the way that she is navigating her anxiety and if 17 year old Amber would have had this book like it would have been a game changer for me. I would have finally had the language to describe all the things that I've been feeling. Josie also has two older sisters and they are so different than her because they're more outgoing. They don't have the same anxiety issues she does. They're also thinner than she is. So she really is having a tough time as she's growing up into herself figuring out how to stand up for herself and set boundaries and advocate for herself within those sister relationships. It's just so good and this book like I don't read a ton of contemporary YA but sometimes they just do it for me and this was one of those books. Five stars, definitely one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year and I will definitely be picking up other Cameron Grant books in the future. And finally some books that I finished in July that are worth sharing with you all. In July I finally read the ever popular and much talked about Royal We. Oh my goodness. For those of you who haven't heard of The Royal We, it basically is a fictionalized retelling of William and Kate's story, how they met and end up getting married, and a commoner becomes a princess. This book was really, really interesting to me, and I honestly don't know if I've really settled on a rating because while I loved it, I did have some like issues with the writing mostly. Obviously this book is like a rom com, right? It's prince meets girl, girl, fall, girl falls in love with prince, prince marries girl, girl becomes princess. But the writing I felt like a lot of times was just trying to be something that the book isn't. Like the book is very much like a fairy tale come to life and this is I felt like it was just trying too hard at times and for that reason the pacing kind of felt like 
mismatch to me whereas usually these kind of books like ramp you up we plateau then we ramp up to the end this one kind of like shrugged because the writing just took me a little bit while a little bit longer to get into i would say if you're reading this maybe give it like and this sounds extreme but like 150 pages after 150 pages i was so invested in the side characters and the story that the pacing became a little bit more i don't know improved to me and the side characters are really what make the story so there's this group of friends obviously they all go to cambridge which is where will and kate meet and did i say cambridge i meant oxford so they're all at oxford and because we have our prince who is not william in the book obviously he's nicholas he's a prince so he can only have a very tight small circle of friends while he's off at university and we have this motley crew of people who are just there for him so we think and embrace bex who is an american girl who's come to do a study abroad program at oxford and never expected to fall in love with a prince there like the cast of characters is honestly perfect and I would read it again just to read the side characters. The stakes get so high at so many points in time and by the end of it I was so nervous about how the book was gonna end even though I obviously knew it was gonna end a certain way because there is a book too um, that I, I was so nervous I had to read switch the audiobook so that I could just get through without stopping my day like I just needed to get to the end because I was like what is about to happen it made me so anxious i really did like this book i liked it way more than i thought i would um this does get a lot of mixed reviews i think the review the mixed reviews honestly are mostly because of the writing and the length it's a very thick book to be what it is and like i said i did feel like it was kind of trying too hard at times but it is a really enjoyable book and i definitely want to read the second one okay continuing with my royal obsession after i read the royal we i read before the crown by Flora Harding. This book honestly like found me, truly found me. I was in Barnes and Noble and it just like popped off of the shelf and fell into my hand and I had no choice but to take it home. That's where that's how that happened. But as you all know if you have spent any amount of time on this channel I'm obsessed with The Crown. I've rewatched every season minimum six times. Like obsessed. I love it and if you have watched the crown and you love the first two seasons you will love this book if you watch the crown and you hated the first two seasons you will hate this book so obviously this follows queen elizabeth before she was queen elizabeth she was still princess elizabeth and it specifically follows the period of time where she was getting engaged to prince philip we follow them from like the first time that she's really thinking about him when she's super young I think she's like 19 18 or 19 to when they finally get the go-ahead to get engaged and get married there's obviously no way I can spoil this book because they literally were married until the day Prince Philip died you know what happened it was really interesting to see how all of this pairs out while they're going through like the second world war and how down bad Philip really was when he was coming to marry Elizabeth it's actually like it's both brilliant and deeply sad how it happens where she's like I think I like Philip I met him twice and he's like do I really want to marry her I'm a lowly prince with no country and no wealth and not much to stand on and my sisters are all married to Nazis so that'll probably be my best bet and after they like reach these logical realizations only then are they like oh I also think I like you it's like oh I like you too but I live for it. It was so good and I love that there's points in time where you really get to see that like through getting engaged, through becoming more of an adult, Elizabeth really comes into her own and becomes the queen that we really know her to be and get to see her portrayed as most in the media and in other fictional stories of her. So I want the Margaret version of this next before she marries Lord Snowden. Ooh, that would be so messy someone write that or if it exists let me know in the comments and the last thing I want to share with you all today is a graphic novel that I read last month and that is called CQ this graphic novel is by Kristen Radke and it is a journey through American loneliness let me tell you if you are feeling very lonely very single very isolated after we just spent a whole year in quarantine read this book with caution throughout this book Kristen basically takes us through what is modern loneliness what it looks like the science behind being lonely what does other countries loneliness kind of look like what does it mean to really be lonely with how we examine loneliness scientifically through studies the artwork is super beautiful like I keep picking the most boring pages here we go 
it's really pretty it's very colorful but it's actually jam-packed with a lot of information like I feel like this could have easily been just like a typical non-fiction book on the science of loneliness or the study of loneliness. This was also sent to me by the publisher, by the way. This book made me think a lot about just how to engage people. There's one part of the book that like really like did me under and that's where she talks about this hotline in the UK I believe it was called the silver line where basically elderly people who don't have other people that they can call can call this line just to like talk to another human being and in that passage they mention that sometimes that is the only time that that person has heard another human voice throughout the course of that day which as someone who lives by yourself like yeah it's very easy to spend the day like doing things at home working from home doing errands whatever and realizing you have not spoken to another living person for 24 hours if not more. That made me kind of like sad. There's also a lot about like this scientist who did studies using um, orangutans and that is really like a lot. <laughs> Just look up the trigger warnings. I will leave a link to the story graph page for this where I'm sure there'll be a full list of trigger warnings from other readers but this was thoroughly enjoyable. I'm loving that I'm getting more into graphic novels this year. This is definitely the year of the graphic memoir and graphic novel for me so I'm always looking for more recommendations. If you have them please leave them in the comments. And that's it. That is my April, May, June, and July best of top noteworthy I don't have a good title for this wrap up. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with a friend, share it on your Instagram story. All is appreciated and I will leave links to all of the books that I mentioned as well as all of my social media down in the description and I will see you all in the next video.